Hey guys, we are looking at the uh, the Yawning Tavern, one of my maps, and this map was built like many, probably most maps, 99.99% of maps in the world, with doors in the artwork, right? And we're used to navigating around and opening and shutting these doors, but they're, they're static, so you just kind of put in a foundry door wall and you're good to go. But Foundry's got these new animated doors. And but if you if you want to use them, you have to have like a map that like doesn't have any doors in it, because look what happens when you when you open these these doors. It's a great effect, great animation, but it's you've got the door underneath, so it just doesn't work. So it's like you can only use animated doors in maps that were made for them, and you're, you're just you know, you know lose like ninety nine point nine nine percent of maps out there in the world. So what can we do? To, to change that. Well, here's a door that doesn't have a door under it. There actually was a door under here, but what you can do with some creativity and using mass edit and, and presets is you can create the ability to basically cover existing doors and throw an animated one on top of it instead. So I'm going to show you guys, this is a very experimental. I'm sure there's a more ideal way to do this, probably a module that could be built to do this. Maybe some of you have ideas, but I'm going to show you how, uh, how I constructed this. And I actually get to give this to you for free. It's actually in my nuts and bolts, free nuts and bolts uh, module. You need mass edit and then nuts and bolts and you can get to it. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Here's another map that was not built with doors in mind, but now you can have animated doors and you can add them anywhere. Same thing with this tavern, right? You have you can create these really nice doors that work. So let's jump in and I'll show you how I constructed it, how you can do the same, and what you can do for free today. Okay, so one of our goals is to, to figure out how to make the doors work. And if we just use a regular door, I don't know, there's some there's some things wrong with it, especially when you lay it on top of another scene, right? So that you have the artwork underneath and the store is kind of gigantic and you know maybe you don't want it that way. So I have put some components in here. We're going to walk through them. But if you want to do this yourself, just install nuts and bolts, Bailey Wiki nuts and bolts and Bailey Wiki mass edit. Go over here to the mass edit presets and just click this top one here. Go to your wall tab at the top and just type animated door. And you should see these come up, right? So these are doors that are already made. Here's one that has kind of stone around it. Here's one that has wood around it. And you might see some weird pieces here. You might be wondering, hey, Bailey, why'd you build it this way? But this is what can effectively drop into any scene and cover things in the right way. So let's, let's kind of step through it. So the pieces that we care about are the door itself. And if you haven't seen what animated door settings look like, again, we're in V13 of Foundry. If you come down here, you can see there's a door, it's in closed state, it's got a door sound, and then it's got an animation type. If you pick none, it eliminates all these fields down here. But if we pick swing, for example, it'll open these up. It'll let you pick some artwork. In this case, we've got a couple of just generic doors, one's thinner, one's thicker. So you can kind of change that around depending on what your aesthetic is. And then you can set these settings down here, but that's essentially how it works. By the way, if you guys are having the same problem with Foundry, you can't actually <laughs> scroll down to the bottom and engage. You have to go to like a field and press tab until you can see things down here. It's a bug clearly, uh, but one that I hope they fix this soon. Because you, you really you just get stuck here and you can't like engage it. So uh, that gives you your animated door, right? And that gives you this effect. Then you need some kind of tile to go under the door that's going to cover the artwork. And I picked this tile because it's generic. Now, some things are special about this tile. If I click the, this open, you can see it's actually got a tint color applied. And if I take that tint color away, you can see it's very light tile. This is so that you can use this door in lots of different maps, right? So you may have a light map with light uh, brick and you want to use that. You may want to darken it. So it comes automatically tinted. You might want it even darker than that. And then you're going to want to know that you have to press shift in order to sort of accurately place it. 
I also picked artwork that I could stretch. So you might find that you need it to be a little bit taller uh, to cover more of the art. So I so this stretches it out. And again, holding shift, I can just precisely cover the art. Maybe you want to stretch it left or right. I opted for less than a square because most uh, maps that you're going to work with, you don't want to encroach on like walls and stuff like that or the, the edges, but you can also make it thinner and just kind of change the dimensions as you, as you like based on the map you're trying to build. Now, the last piece I have as a component are just these little like frame stones, I call them, and they are overhead tiles. So their position is in this case, 8.9 feet. I don't know why that was so precise. And, uh, and they sit above everything else. Oops. So if I want to drag one of these over again, I hold shift, that'll help me cover the artwork. And if you want your door to be smaller, and I kind of do, I could shrink it in like that. This is, these help you shrink your door and not have like gaps. So I might move that over there a little bit, move that over there. And I've got a nice smaller door that I can have swing. And it just, I don't know, feels more complete, more natural, right? And then I slide this underneath and I've got all of my components. Now I do have a token magic effects drop shadow applied to here. If I open my token magic effects, I set it uh, macro. This is also in nuts and bolts. It's free. You can see all the settings um, for those shadows. And I just, I set those shadows so that I could create some visual distance, not only between this and the door underneath it, but also the other artwork and walls. I think it just gives it that finished look and it makes it nice and flexible to put kind of anywhere. You don't necessarily need all these pieces. And of course you can make your own, which I'll show you here in a second, but these are why I chose these components and what they're doing. These also have tints applied to them so you can match them to the bottom uh, in case you weren't aware of that. Well, actually I forgot one more thing. If you're gonna drop it into a place where there's already a cavity for a door, let's say you delete the one in the map that you like and you're gonna drop one of these in, I just include these little sidewalls so you can connect things up. When you drop this door in, if it's not snapped to grid properly, you'll have little gaps and you may want this extra wall here to move things around. If you don't, just delete it and it will delete the wall and you don't have to worry about it. This is just, uh, it's easier to delete things than it is to add them. So I included this in what I think is the right settings for a preset. So now to make the preset, we go to my wall controls. I'm gonna select this wall here. Then I'm gonna go over to my mass edit presets I'm Gonna click that. I'm gonna open up my main mass edit window. If this is your first time in your world, it might take a second to open it up. Then I'm gonna make sure that I'm in the right compendium. So in this case, your default compendium is going to be mass edit presets main. Everyone has that one. It's probably the only one that you do have. I have a lot more because I uh, creator here. So I'm in the right one. That means that this is like my little workshop here. This is where I can make my own presets. I'm going to go over to the wall tool and I'm going to, uh, we're going to do a couple of things. So I'm, I'm going to let this sit for a second. So I've got my wall here uh, created and now I'm going to press the L key for linker. It's going to open up this linker menu. Then I'm gonna to go to here, this is attached multi-layer uh, selection. Whoops. Let's go to the select tool. Let's do that again. Select everything and it attached four documents. That's the entities that are involved here. So now these are all part of a preset. And if I move it around, my preset moves around with it. Now, you may not want that behavior, if you don't, if you want things to move independently of each other, you can press this and say Shift Q. It's going to open this menu. It's a special special linker menu where it shows the relationship of all of these things. And right now, they all push and pull location data to each other. If I wanted to change that, I would say change it to all of these. Walls actually don't matter. They don't uh, push data. And now, the, while these are still these are still connected, you can see they don't um, manipulate each other. So let's say that's how I want this thing to work. Let's go back to our wall. Again, we're in our wall tab, and I'm going to drag this wall. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to grab the artwork for the door here. That's from the wall settings. Now I'm going to drag this wall into this window anywhere, and it's going to say, "Hey, do you want to create a placeable?" 
with all these linked pieces. I'm going to call this um, animated door demo. I'm going to give it that thumbnail image that I grabbed. This is the image of the door, just to remind you. And, uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and say apply. And here's our animated door demo. When I double click it, I can drag it around. I can hold down shift and rotate it. I can even hold down alt and make it bigger. Now we may want to make a double door though for that. We can certainly make it smaller. And then I can hold down control and change it, you know, very slightly. And I can place that on my scene. I can even right click this, add it to a brush. And now if I have it on spawn mode, I can add lots of these to a scene. Right? So I can go around and do my whole entire scene with these animated doors. And they all just work. Cool, right? Now you may make some adjustments. Maybe you have a scene that this artwork doesn't work. You, you make your own adjustments. That's how you build your own prefabs, right? So like if I like this door, I select it. And maybe I've made some changes to that, the whole thing. I can go over here, right click this, go to edit. And I can reassign this preset with its new settings, okay? So now I've got this new preset and you'll notice it even comes with the door open setting, right? So that's how you make your own presets. You, you link it here with the linker menu, pressing L, you attach everything to it. And then you just grab one item and you drag it over here to your presets and you've got it. Now I could have just as easily dragged that wall into the tile tab or wherever I want to keep this. I just happen to put this one in the wall tab. Okay. So there are other types of settings you can see here. I open this up. I go down, pressing tab, you notice I select a double door. When you select double door, it automatically, it's really cool, it automatically takes the artwork and just mirrors it. And it gives us this satisfying double door animation. So you can make this as well. And you notice I created double doors. And so I can add these to a scene. So that one's not uh, a fully connected one. If you wanna use mine, you know, we look for animated door and the 2x, the animated like stone or wood 2x that does it. All right. So there's a nice double animated door. I can change the color and tint of all the artwork and everything just works. Incidentally, if you have multi-face tiles installed, that's another module. You can right click it and you can just alternate between these two in case you're like, hey, you know, I like a stone frame, but I want to on a wood floor cover, that kind of thing. That's uh, that's something else you can do. That's just a hidden Easter egg. So that's it. Let me know if you guys are intrigued by, the, by this idea. If you have ideas for making animated doors for existing maps even better or easier. Maybe there's a way, different way to construct the prefabs. Uh, maybe a module can do a lot of this stuff. I think somebody should build a module that makes it just easy to change door settings. Like it's kind of annoying if I want it to swing the other way that I have to go all the way into the settings and fight my way down there and 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 click the reverse button. Uh, sorry, then I have to do the yeah, reversed animation. It's a lot of work. So making those settings kind of easily accessible for doors might be a good module for somebody to build. But anyway, you guys let me know how you get along. If you think this is a good idea, if this sounds just totally absurd to you and not worth it, I do really like the idea of having animated doors on any scene. So uh, I'm going to keep playing with it. And uh, you guys let me know if you have any better ideas. That's it for today. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you have fun with this and have, hope you have fun making your maps.